everybody, it's Alexa, and I wanted to share some ideas about digital decluttering. I recently read a book called 10 Minute Digital Declutter, and it helped me go through a bunch of things with, you know, the cell phone, the tablet, the laptop, and it was really just kind of a to-do list about all of those things. But I wanted to share some of my thoughts around digital decluttering because I think it is just so critical right now. Two months ago, I posted my video about why you should quit Facebook and Twitter. I've since been reading some articles that talk about, or books that talk about the cost of a social media in terms of our attention and our ability to do deep focus and, and deep work. And also the fact that we tend to give away a lot of our time on social media using sort of the any benefit argument. Uh, this is something from Cal Newport's book, Deep Work. And he said the any benefit argument basically is any minor benefit that you might achieve from social media is then used to justify the fact that you might spend four hours a day on it or, or, or that you might feel inadequate because you've seen pictures of somebody else's perfect life or that you've lost the ability to you know, focus for hours at a time on, on deep work and you've begun to interrupt yourself and constantly seek novelty. So those are the costs and obviously the biggest cost perhaps being addiction which, as I also put in my original video, a lot of the designers of these devices and the designers of these social networks, they intentionally made these things addictive. You're using a slot machine metaphor when you scroll down looking for novelty. You're just like somebody on a slot machine pulling down the lever. You're getting a dopamine hit when you get a result, whether that result is a text or you know anything else. So digital decluttering, I would say the first thing to really think about is social media. And since, now to be honest, I have been on Twitter, I, I deleted my Twitter profile, but I have gone to check, especially this week I've been pretty bad. So I have been checking Twitter homepage. I think we're living in some pretty crazy times right now and I want to be aware of what's going on. However, obviously that's not the only way. I'm also, I'm a classic example of the kind of person who Cal Newport himself identified. I'm a writer, so I'm the perfect person to kind of be a media addict. But I also really felt strongly something that Steve Pavlina, a blogger, had mentioned a while ago, which was, in 10 years, do you still want to be posting on social media? And really to see that as the metaphor for the rest of my life, I find that difficult, although, who knows, maybe I'll come back to Twitter. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I haven't really left because I'm still checking it. And what is it doing? It's still causing me anxiety, stress, sadness. Um, there are moments where I'm glad that I'm aware of certain things, but then there are other moments where I think, why did I just go down that rabbit hole? And I'm still using something called rescue time, which I also talked about in an older video. And so the good news is I haven't gone past an hour a day of social media, and that includes Pinterest. So it also looks at Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook. I have YouTube categorized as productive time, so I would love suggestions if you have them on how to beat the Twitter headline addiction. Second point that I want to mention is security. Oh my goodness. It's just so key right now. But I want to show you something that it seems like, and even in this book that I read about digital decluttering and it talked about um, your online presence, they did not talk about two-factor. So that is called Semantic VIP. What this does is this is a security key. It's a free app. I'm only using it with one website right now, but I will link to it. The Electronic Frontier Foundation had a great article. It's kind of a digital manifesto, and it talks about you know your internet security, safety, how you want to proceed, basically. What is your digital life going to be like? And it's a really important consideration right now. The next point for digital decluttering is going to be your email. Because if you're using free email services, and I am, that's like putting your information on a billboard. There's nothing secure about it in the least. So you need to start, first of all, with some basic encryption in your email. But also, you need to never, ever send anything sensitive via email. Legal documents, birth certificates, contracts tax information, anything with social security number on it. And ideally, maybe start to look at an email, a paid email service, or getting email through your own domain. I've been slowly but surely deleting out stuff from my old Yahoo account, 
with the goal of eventually just closing that out or using it completely for spam. Now I want to talk about some of the points that are in this book, 10 Minute Digital Declutter. And they talk about once you go through a big purge, just like Conmarie, you know, going through all of your devices, they do a good job of going through all the aspects that you're going to want to think about with your devices, text messages and voicemails and voice memos and photographs and videos and music that you no longer listen to, all those things which will help your phone run faster. Well, you gotta do the same thing with your laptop. The first action item is clear out your downloads and documents folders. And that is something you can do weekly, you could do it monthly, you could do it every three months. Another point that I wanna mention because I think it's actually um, in a different part of this book, but I really loved it, was this concept of the minimalist computer. And I really like that where, and I, so I took that um, and I organized my computer in that way. So now I have um, my browsing. So the, all I have on the computer now is folders, Safari, email, calendar, a writing app, a music composition app, iMovie, two more music composition apps, and the final writing app, which is Scrivener. Basically, what I've got there is all just creation apps. Nothing is entertainment. And I used to have a bunch of other things there. This helps you be focused. And same thing with my desktop. My desktop is simple. Oh, and a great idea, which I wanna implement maybe in another video as well. For your desktop image, try making it a vision board. Isn't that a great idea? So you could create your own little vision board and then boop, put it there as your desktop. The next action item is find and eliminate duplicate files. And you can use a lot of different apps for this. The one that I use is Araxis Find Duplicate Files. I've used that for a couple of years. And that's really, really helpful because it'll actually look, doesn't care about the name of the file. I think it looks at the actual digital content of the file and makes an assessment there whether it's the same and then you can determine whether or not you want to delete things. Next, you're going to want to run an antivirus and there's a number of antiviruses that are cheap or free. Next, and this goes back to the minimalist computer idea, delete all the unnecessary programs and apps that you have. Take a KonMari perspective and think, does this give me joy? Because a lot of apps, you know, yeah, you downloaded it once and you're using it. Now you haven't used it in six months or a year. Let it go, you know, maybe Later, you'll decide, okay, I need it again. Well, you can download it again. But in the meanwhile, you'll enjoy some focus and, and simplicity on your desktop and your computer. Next action item, clear your browser history. And when I did this following this book, I mean, I literally had years on the browser history. So that was nice to clean that off. And I cleaned off all my favorites. Again, that was years and years of stuff that it actually carried over through um, 10 years of, of Macs that I've had. You may want to clear out your cookies. It depends on your point of view about that, but it's good to do that every once in a while anyway, just to make sure that there aren't websites tracking you that you don't want tracking you, etc. Also, consider using things like Tor or, I've only used it a little bit, it's really slow, but you can use Tor or you can also just use a private browsing window with Safari if you want Safari to not track you. Although, as far as I know, the private browsing and the Tor, neither of those are f um, completely anonymous methods of browsing the internet. So you're going to want to really read up on, there's there's a bunch of factors, sort of each piece of the pipeline to using the internet that exposes your activities to the various service providers that you're using. And again, it depends on your concerns and what you're worried about, but I love what the Electronic Frontier Foundation has done in terms of sort of categorizing, well, you're a journalist, this is what you're gonna to wanna to be concerned about. Well, you're a business, this is what you're gonna to wanna to be concerned about. You're an activist, this is what you're gonna to wanna to be concerned about. And I, I think that's a great way to characterize it, recognizing that we all have different risks and, um, and, and concerns. Next point, use a computer tune-up program. And the one that I used to, I didn't, I haven't defragmented my hard drive or anything, um, but I did do use it to uninstall sort of log files and cache files, temporary files, and also choose what programs boot up when you uh, turn on the computer. And, and also it's got some browser history controls and stuff like that. So I used C Cleaner, and um, that one was, I thought it had a good interface, it was free. Um, but there are a bunch of other ones as well, like IO, IO System Mechanic, A Shampoo, AVG, PC Tune-Up. Do be careful with some of these because in the past, I know I have deleted things that I didn't want to delete or I shouldn't have deleted. So I think most of these are pretty good. And then the final one is clean your computer, you know, actually physically clean your computer. Maybe get some compressed air, just turn it over and shake it out, shake out all the crumbs and clean the screen and you know, give it a little love and, uh, you know, recognize it for the miracle machine magical portal that it is and 
enjoy it like it's brand new and possibly even maybe get a cover for it. I, I just found a new kind of a clamshell plastic cover that you can put on your laptop. You can order them online. I haven't, I don't have it, but I thought, well, that's a nice way if you wanted to protect it from scratches or customize it, paint it, make it look pretty. And once you've done all these things, was go ahead and you know make sure you do it on your phone and your tablet and everything else. I really like, I think this is a great concept that this book has. They said create a digital manifesto and have some core values. Think what are you using digital devices for? And here are just some of the questions that they have and I think these are great. How much time each workday is absolutely necessary for me to spend on my devices? Am I in a job that requires me to spend more time than I want behind my computer? How could I interact face-to-face -face more often with people in my work? How much time do I want to spend at home on the computer doing work? How much time do I want to spend on social media for entertainment? How much time do I want to spend on my smartphone for entertainment? In which situations is a call or a personal meeting more appropriate than a text? What real life friendships have I neglected and how do I want to nurture them? What family or relationship agreements should we have in place about using our smartphones, iPads, or laptops in each other's presence? That's a good one. What traditions or family time, like dinners together, do you want to make sacred and personal without the presence of digital devices? What limitations or rules should we have for our children's use of digital devices? Another big one. How should I be a role model for my children when it comes to these rules? Ah, like texting and driving, right? When I have downtime, what are the top five best ways I should use it? How can I deal with urges to surf the net or engage in social media when I really don't want to? Ah, that was me today. This morning I wrote down, I will not go on the Twitter, and what did I do? I've, I got a lot of good stuff done, but then later in the day, I, I went on and it was, ah, oh, it was, it was, it was heart-wrenching. It was horrible. Why did I do that to myself? And what is the best way to counteract that? I think the best way is actual physical action in the real world. How will I commit to managing my digital clutter so that it doesn't get out of hand again? And then they say, at the very least, writing your digital manifesto will plant a seed in your mind about the boundaries you want to enforce related to your devices. Basically just saying that self-awareness is going to help you and you know it possibly could be a big change. And, and they say, and I've said this myself, the digital age isn't going away, in fact, it's getting more ubiquitous and distracting. No one is going to step in and prevent you from falling down the rabbit hole of the virtual world. It's up to you to manage it for yourself, and that means taking preemptive action. I thought that was a really nice way to finish out this book, and I, I do recommend it. They have another book called 10 Minute Declutter Your Thoughts, something like that, so I'll do a review on that one as well, because I thought that was great. Declutter Your Mind, I thought that was a good one. I'll give you a hint. What do you think is the number one way to declutter your mind when all these digital messages have gotten you upset. Um, it's called nature, mother nature. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Let me know what you think, how you're putting these things into place. I know it was a lot of information, but hopefully maybe you got inspired and went, a, went ahead and got some of that digital decluttering done while I was talking. So thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe. All right, bye-bye.